advanced materials I usually describe as being intelligently designed for a purpose. We're looking to make something to do a job specifically. It can be anything involving nanotechnology, um, any kind of composite materials. Composite material is anything where you have two or more different types of materials. And together, they give you this better performance for what you're trying to accomplish. So here's a, um, some fabric, carbon fabric. Also fiberglass, this is this white material. So just as itself, it's just a soft fabric, but they have excellent tinsel properties. So when you actually combine this carbon fabric with the uh, like a resin system, epoxy resin system, for example, and you kind of bake it and you cure it, you end up getting a composite material that has excellent strength, stiffness, um, and it really opens up a lot more um, opportunities for different uh, applications. I think the best way to think of advanced manufacturing is when you look at uh, an automobile. When Henry Ford put the first one out on the assembly line, you had a group of people that were standing there with wrenches and, and screwdrivers and adding each bolt at a time, throwing the tire on. You had a lot of people that were involved in the process. Now, an automobile is made mostly by robots. It goes down a manufacturing line that might not be touched by human hands for, for quite some time. Once you have advanced materials, since it's not something that you can just walk and pick up off the ground, you gotta figure out how to make it. And a lot of times, the techniques for putting things together, uh, they don't exist. You might know how to make it in a test tube in a lab, but people have to then come up with techniques to take that uh, nice little nifty material and make enough of it to be useful. So I use the example of automobile manufacturing. There's a lot of others like that. The iPhone's a great one, Intel processor chips, Every bit of technology that, that you're using and interacting with on a daily basis comes from somebody who's figured out how to make it creatively. So yeah, maybe advanced manufacturing sounds boring, but it's pretty exciting to try and figure out how to keep up with all the latest trends and the changes in technology and keep doing it quickly. One of the first projects I worked on was, was for NASA. It was about deployable structures in space. And so in order to um, get these structures in space, it's important for them to be lightweight and also, also deployable or collapsible. So here's where composites came in and also some of our shape memory polymer materials, uh, materials that actually can change shape. And the goal of this was to make things that were the size of football fields out in outer space. And so this technology enables things like that to occur. One need from a, from a customer was that there's often in the aerospace industry with commercial aircraft, there's bird strikes. And so a lot of times the, the airplanes will undergo damage, experience damage during, during flight. Sometimes you know it happens, sometimes you don't. So you need a way to sense the damage and also you need a way to repair that damage. And so here we developed a resin system that can heal itself and then we worked with other engineers here at Cornerstone Research Group for sensing the damage and determining how to heal that step part of the, of the aircraft. It's very important to focus on these STEM courses in high school because it really builds that foundation, which enables you to be a much better problem solver. It gives you a leg up. In a lot of STEM jobs, it's how quickly you can solve problems, because there's an always, always another problem to solve. So I, I believe that the, the courses that you want to focus on um, really come down to the ones that help you think. Some of the STEM topics I use in my, in my job every day are chemistry, a lot of um, fluid mechanics, understanding how materials work together, which, which really draws on these, these chemistry classes, the, the math classes, physics, a lot of things that you don't really consciously know you're drawing from. It just kind of helps you 
intuitively figure out things and make small decisions every day when you're working on a problem. Chemistry helps you understand the interactions between different materials, um, and then you kind of go bigger in scale with kind of fluid flow. During processing, how a resin where some fluid is going to uh, be manipulated by the process, how you can actually use that to make, actually reach your end goal. For me, I get to play with really expensive toys, I get to make really cool things, I get to do it every day, and every day is a little bit different. And what brings spice to that is the people that I get to interact with. I became an engineer because I was interested in having some greater purpose in my life. I wanted to be able to contribute to society, to help other people. I, I thought I always wanted to be a medical doctor because you could have that you know, immediate contact, immediate impact with a person in need. But I found, you know, through high school and college, I was kind of drawn to engineering. As an engineer, you can have this much greater impact with some of these the problems that you're solving. You can help improve people's quality of life throughout the world. And so some of these skills that you have as an engineer really enable you to make a big impact on, on people's life.